school property today I'm actually standing in the creek uh, what we're going to talk about is what's known as a seep well or a coyote well sometimes you'll hear it called an Egyptian well or an artesian well uh, or you can just simply call it that hole in the ground by the creek so we're going to talk about how that works how to make one but beyond that we're going to talk about is it really feasible does it serve any real legitimate purpose is in uh, wilderness survival issues or, or scenarios as far as hydrating yourself and the safety of it based upon the soils and, the, and we're going to talk about that a lot of myths out here you guys know how i am on that stuff we try to clarify with factual data so we're going to go through the process of a, a seep well and a coyote well and we'll show you how it's done and then we'll talk more about it then all right so as you guys can see right here we've got the water flow coming in this direction uh we've got a nice little sandbar up here and then this is a, a small creek Got high banks on both sides, but I got a nice little shelf right here. This is a sand creek. We will talk more about uh, sand, clay, gravel, and other things momentarily. But uh, we've got a nice little shelf right here. So the idea behind a seep well or a coyote well is that instead of drinking this surface water that it's questionable, we don't know if it's safe, you dig a hole offset from the main flow or the main channel of water, the ground seepage fills the hole, the sediment settles in the hole. And then you can dip your cup in there and drink, or you can drink straight from that hole. And the idea is that the ground underneath the surface filters that water for you. Uh, so sandy soils, dirt, you know, regular dirt and stuff, right, two to four feet, depending on what you're working with. Uh, clay, man, you know, you can get it a little tighter than that. If it's real loose sand, I might want to be even further than that. So just depends on what you're working with is in the soil will tell you. Get a handful of it, look if it's loose or tight, what's going on, clay, sand, dirt, rock, gravel, it's all different. Uh, the way you approach it should be different. So the nice little shelf right here. I'm gonna start the digging process of digging a coyote well or a seep well and let this water from this uh, creek that's flowing seep through the ground and fill this hole up. So hang loose, I'll get this done. All right, y'all, I got this dug. Uh, use sticks, hands, whatever you got. Uh, this is pretty soft stuff. Uh, I'm still, you know, from the edge of this water back here, I'm a good three or four feet off of it. Uh, use whatever you got. Sticks or hands will work fine. As you can see, that sediment is already starting to settle in there, and it's only been about five minutes. Uh, from this upper side, we're probably eight to ten inches below the surface, but to the bottom of that hole that I dug two two and a half feet probably uh it's soft i can get my big old paw down in there and dig it out of there so we got a good hole to let everything settle everything to seep in there it might take 20 30 minutes probably not in this sand but we're gonna watch see what happens and come back and check it uh we're good like i said three to four feet probably off of that water line so we'll see what happens all right y'all it's been about 15 minutes probably 10 12 minutes uh since we last talked I don't know if you can see it on this camera, but a good deal of that sediment has settled in the top layer of this stuff pretty clear. So I'll stick my hand in here right under the surface. Let that fill up. Pretty good, pretty clear. The longer I let this sit here, the better that's gonna be. Now, that being said, is the water in this coyote or seep well any safer to drink or any cleaner? Then this water that's flowing about four feet, five feet away from it, depending on where you're at. Is it any safer? Is it any cleaner? We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll talk about the filtering capabilities of different soils. And we'll talk about this method as it pertains to a wilderness survival uh, scenario uh, and the realities behind it. So that's what's up. Seep well, coyote well, Egyptian well, artesian well, or simply the whole in the ground beside the creek. So let's go talk about it. Had to get some tobacco, guys. All right, we're back up to our main camp area from the creek down here. <clears throat> so let's talk about this coyote well or this seep well or the hole beside the creek. So 
to understand whether that's a viable option or not, we must first talk about what makes us sick out here from this water we drink. So excuse my camera work. There you go. The things we're gonna find in surface water in nature in this country, in this part of the country is gonna be things like protozoa, bacteria, and viruses. So protozoa, let's talk about micron size, size of these things in microns. Protozoa runs from down around a two micron up to around 50. The common ones you might know about are Cryptosporidium and Giardia. They're five plus microns, uh, generally eight to 12. Uh, and you know, you, when you do research on this stuff, you'll get estimates down to six and up to 14, 15. It depends on what source you're looking at. Eight to 12 is, is the general uh, size of the crypto and giardia. Protozoa in general are two to 50. So now bacteria, they are tiny, tiny. Uh, they can go down to a 0.2 microns in width, but as much as 10, maybe 20 microns in length. So point, so whatever you want to call it, you've got a low end range of a 0.2 micron and a high end range of 10 to 20 in length micron. Now, the next thing we got to deal with is viruses. Those are the teeny tiny ones. They'll start down there around a 0 0.004 micron and they will go up to around 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So we got a common theme here, 0 0.2, or I'm sorry, 0 0.2 there, 0 0.2 there. That's the smaller ones. Everything else is larger than that. <clears throat> but there again, both of these small ones, maybe they go higher than that 0.2 or that 0.1, depends on what you're dealing with. A lot of viruses in surface water, or I'm sorry, a lot of viruses in general require human to human transmission. They're not uh, transmit or transmittable from animal to human. They're not transmittable from, you know, water to, to ingestion in a human. They have a very short lifespan once they leave the host. Uh, moving, flowing water, exposure to sunlight, air, things like that kill them pretty quick. So you got that going for you when it comes to viruses. So now let's talk about some of our common water filters that are on the market. This is normal stuff like you hear people talk about using, backpackers, hikers, uh, put it in your bug out bag, whatever the case may be. So let's start with the first one, the Sawyer Mini. The Sawyer Mini is a 0.1 micron filter rating. It is an absolute filter rating. When I say absolute, that means that no pore in that filter is larger than a 0.1 micron, okay? <clears throat> Next, we have LifeStraw. It is a 0.2 micron filter rating, but it is a nominal filter rating. And when I say nominal, I mean there are pores in this filter down to 0.2, but some pores may be larger than 0.2, but it has pores in it down to a 0.2. And I, we'll stick with three this time. So the third one that people are into these days is the Grail, the GeoPress. I own one, love it, very handy. It has a point, or I'm sorry, a 1.25 micron filter size. So you're probably thinking, well, how in the hell does this take care of virus, bacteria, and all this stuff that's smaller than a 1.25? And it does it by electro adhesion. It's a positively charged carbon in there, virus, and larger, it, it takes care of. There's been some testing by the CDC, if you trust the fucking CDC, right? So, but it's passed um, multiple tests through the CDC. So that's what Grail's got going for them with the electro adhesion. All right, to have a coyote well or a seep well, obviously you don't have these. So let's talk about the soils and the particle size of these soils when we're dealing with things out here in nature. Silt, let's start down here at the bottom. Silt is a mixture of clay and sand. It can range from five microns in size up to about 60. And you guys will have to excuse my handwriting. It sucks, I know. Now let's move up from silt to gravel. Gravel's huge, man. Small gravel, pebbles, little bitty things. Even gravel, you're going to be looking at 2,000 microns to 64,000 microns. Absolutely useless, useless for filtering. Dirt, I forgot to write that in there. Now you can split the difference on that stuff. It's still going to be larger than four or five microns all day long. I haven't even looked, but I guarantee you it is. Sand like we got in the creek down here where I dug the uh, seep well. It is rated from, the particle size of sand is 60 micron 
up to around 2000, depending on whether it's fine or coarse. And then the one that everybody says is good for filtering water in a coyote well or a seep well, and that would be clay. It is rated from one micron to 0.5, give or take one or two, right? Depending on what you're working with. And there again, that goes from fine up, up to larger than that, fine being one. So if we look back up here at our microns and our things that will harm us, what up here is larger than a one? Crypto and Giardia, eight to 12, it's five plus, right? It's bigger than the one. Bacteria, negative. Virus, negative. Protozoa in general is two and up. So protozoa, in, in, such as Crypto and Giardia and others, they're larger than the one. Now, the general rule or what you, well, I say general rule, but what you'll hear out here in the, in the survival instructor community is, <laughs> If it's clay, you can make your well closer to the water, the flowing water source. If it's sand or dirt, farther away, right? You want more of that ground to, to protect that. So keep in mind when we do, when we're dealing with these uh, coyote wells or these seep wells, we're not trying to dig deep enough to tap into a natural spring where it's coming out of the hill. That's a different matter altogether. We're talking about creeks, ponds, whatever you got, flowing water preferably. So that's the general idea is. Looser the soil, farther away. Tighter the soil, the closer you can get it. Now, that being said, let's say I have ideal clay. I have perfect clay at a one micron. I put that dude two to five feet off of my creek. I think I'm safe from Crypto and Giardia and Protozoa. I know I'm not bacteria and virus, but am I really safe from that? You in the field have no way to determine what's in between your whole edge and the edge of that flowing water. Is there breaks in there? Is there cracks in there? Is it actually that density of clay all the way to the water source? That's unknown. It's completely unknown. And you'll see guys talking about, well, you've got your suit, you can just dip your cup in there and drink. Well, fuck, if you don't get sick, go ahead. So maybe you won't, probably not. In, in most of this country, uh, in the wild areas anyway, not a lot of surface water contamination, thank God depending on your area, let me preface that, or let me clarify that. Uh, now down here in this creek we're in, we got two agricultural fields back there, soybean fields on either end of it. Uh, it's farming time of the year, man. They're spraying that shit probably, you know, you gotta be careful with that. Chemicals is a whole nother deal. We didn't even touch on that. You're not gonna get rid of chemicals. Just not, they're gonna be there. So clay, one to five. You're not going to be safe even in clay from protozoa because what's in between your drinking hole and that flowing water is unknown. Maybe it's clay, but we don't know what size micron. We don't have a way to test that in the field. Maybe it's five clay. Maybe you're looking at clay and it looks nice and dense and tight, but shit, it may be a four or five micron clay. So it does you no benefit. So how do you get around that? You boil it. Boiling it is the only way to make sure that it's safe to drink, okay? You cannot technically, if you want to get hung up on terminology, you can't technically purify water in the field. <clears throat> we don't run around with reverse osmosis backpacks on us, right? Reverse osmosis fill, or things that, like city water treatment plants and stuff using reverse osmosis will get down there to a 0 .0001 micron. Takes care of all that. We do not have the ability in the field to do that. You will not be safe in any soil in a coyote or seep well. So is there any difference in drinking from that hole three feet off of that surface water that's feeding it as opposed to drinking straight out of that? And I would say, no, you cannot be certain. There is no way that, that you can verify that that clay is what it is. So the only way to make it safe is to boil it, boil it. My old saying, I guess other people probably are along the same mindset. If you want to be as sure as you can be, filter it, boil it, then drink it. It's the only way to be sure. So, you know, boiling, boiling will take care of most of your stuff, man. But that's, that's really what's going on out here when you're talking about coyote wells and seep wells. You'll see a lot of teachings out here that'll teach that method and teach you to, to uh, dig that hole, let the sediment settle, dip your cup in there, drink it. That's not safe water. 
okay? We can't purify it with reverse osmosis out here. All we can do is treat suspect water to make it safer to drink or safe to drink. Boiling is the number one method to do that in the field. Filters are great. Use them if you got them. Boiling is better. Damn sure do that if you can. If you cannot and you are in deep shit, which statistically is so minuscule that a lot of these survival teachings out here have reached the point of absolute silliness and they will get people killed. So when in doubt, if you're gonna dehydrate and you don't have anything but suspect water, you have to drink it. You have to because immediate death or very soon death awaits you. You can deal with shitting yourself blind and deal with the sickness once you get rescued and get out to the hospital and get some medical care, <clears throat> but you don't wanna lay out there and die in the field from dehydration. So that's a basic rundown of the coyote and the seep well, the stuff that makes us sick, the particle size of the soil, and then some of the common filters that are on the market today. Uh, get you a good stainless steel or titanium cup, a bottle, boil the shit out of it if possible. Y'all take care, stay safe. Mm -hmm.